Before we dive into Wireshark, you need to become familiar with the OSI model. This model references how information is communicated in a network. In chapter one, I told you that in order for two devices to communicate, they first need to go from the device to the router and or switches and locate each other by their IP addresses. Well, there's a little bit more to that, and the OSI model describes device communication on a more granular level using seven different layers. In order to describe these seven layers, I'm going to use an example of me sending you an email message that says, hello, it's me. As I'm describing the layers, imagine the lower layer being encapsulated by the layer above it. Sort of like the upper layer is a ball that swallows up the ball in the layer below it. When the email I sent you leaves my computer, we are at layer one, the physical layer. This layer is responsible for getting my message through the network cable. My hello message in this layer is a binary code. These are the ones and zeros you saw in the Matrix movie. The ones, by the way, they represent on, and the zeros represent off, like you see in a light switch. Our first layer ball makes it from the wire to your device, and once it's there, it is encapsulated by layer two, the data link layer. This layer is associated with your MAC address. The MAC address is a unique identifier for your network adapter. Unique identifier is sort of like your serial number. The network adapter is that part of your computer that connects you to the network. The MAC address is also called your device physical address because it physically stays with your network adapter wherever it goes. Layer two will have your source and destination MAC addresses. Let's move on to layer three, the network layer. This layer deals with IP addresses. IP addresses are also called logical address because it is assigned by your internet service provider or your router. This means your IP address can change depending on the network you're on. Your IP address is stored in a file on your computer, such as your registry. The next ball to encapsulate our message is layer four, the transport layer. In previous layers, our hello message was able to confirm your computer location using destination IP and MAC address. In the transport layer, port numbers are used to help the computer separate its communication. Port numbers help the computer to multitask because even though it has as little as one IP address, each IP address will have 65,535 different ports to use. The type of service slash protocol that goes through these port numbers depends on how the information needs to be processed. Two of the most popular protocols are TCP or UDP. TCP is used for communications that require accuracy and transmission, such as email, while UDP doesn't check for error. It sends the message or fails to send it. UDP protocol is used for communications like VoIP. Inside the header of this protocol is the source and destination port number. Next stop is layer five, session layer. This layer controls the opening and closing of connections between devices. For example, this layer makes it possible for you to log onto Facebook, close your web browser, open your web browser later and not have to enter your password again because the session between your computer and the Facebook server is still going. And then we have layer six, the presentation layer. This layer formats the data so that the intended application can understand it. My hello message will be formatted so that your email client, such as Outlook, can see it and understand it. This is also where my hello message will be decrypted if it was encrypted by me. And finally, we have layer seven, the application layer. This is the layer where you and the data communicate. This is where you receive my email in your inbox and you can open it up and read my message. Popular protocols live on layer seven, listening and waiting at their default port number. The email message uses SMTP protocol. This protocol listens on port 25. Another popular protocol is HTTP. That listens on port 80 or port 443. HTTP would have been used if you wanted to display a web page. Let's say you send a reply message of, hey, what's up? Well, that message will work its way down the OSI model inside your machine, starting with the biggest ball, layer seven. Now imagine the application layer being peeled back like an onion skin to reveal layer six. It gets peeled until it reaches layer one, the physical layer. And that's the ones and zeros that are transferred through the wire back to me. I receive the binary and build your message back up to layer seven. And all that work occurs in a fraction of a second.
You will need to memorize these OSI layers and the popular port numbers. See you on the next one.